when opportunity presents itself, you have to take advantage of wildlife photography. I was out earlier on just a bit of a recce walk around where I live and um, came across this field with uh, geese in it. It's probably 20, 20 odd grey lag geese and four or five pinkfoot. There was one geese that I have never seen in Scotland before. I've seen it a few times down in southern England in Cambridge. That's the Egyptian goose. So today I'm going to show how I approach geese for photography. I got nothing against feeding birds in the garden and photographing them there, but for me, that doesn't give me the full experience of wildlife photography. Going out, finding the wildlife, learning about it, and then figuring out a way to get close to photograph them. It's such a big part of wildlife photography for me. We have a few geese in Scotland year round, but most of our geese arrive in autumn and they leave in springtime. And they come from northern countries, such as Iceland, Scandinavia, and Russia and knowing about their behavior and how they move through the landscape can really help you with your photography. So for the wintering geese in this country, usually what they will do is they will roost in big numbers in large locks or areas where they feel safe. Now at dawn, they will fly away from the roost and they'll often split up into different groups and come to fields just like the one in front of me here where they go to feed. And they'll often be in fields like this all day. But not always in the same one, they'll fly about to different fields. Sometimes, you know, a farmer or a walker scare them from one field and go to another. But they are quite predictable and they will come back to the same fields again and again. And that can really help us plan our photography. Knowing that most days the birds will come here, there's only one part of the puzzle. After that, we have to figure out how we're going to approach them. How are we going to get close to them without them just flying away? Because these are wild birds. You cannot just walk up to them and take photos and expect them to stay around. Sometimes if you approach slowly, they might just walk slowly to the other side of the field. And if you approach a little bit too fast, they'll take off and they'll be gone. Can't tell you how many times I've approached birds only to see them fly away or you, you photograph the rear end as they fly off. A big part of the fun as well for me is that it is tricky, it is hard. You have to, you have to think, you have to get creative. How are you going to get close? How are you going to photograph them? Learning about their behavior and then planning an approach is the best way forward. So these stone walls here will actually allow me to move around pretty much unseen if I just duck down a little bit and I can move around to closer to where they are in the field. So I'm going to use these gates here. I have three of these gates along these sides here and that is key. That's what I'm going to be using to get in close to these and getting to ground level to get me that eye level view with the birds. Let's go back, get some clothes on that will allow me to basically crawl around in this mud and then I'm going to show how I approach these geese in the field. I'm going to stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll kind of go through how it went because I might not be able to show absolutely everything in the vlog. Okay, so now these are the kind of clothes that I put on when I want to go crawl in the mud and it's wet. And these will just keep me warm incredibly well insulated and also very rough. You can see here, already quite dirty. I use them all the time. I used them recently up on a hill photographing uh, mountain hares and ptarmigans. These are so warm and thick. I could lie down in the snow in these and they really stay warm throughout the day. I was up there for probably, I was up there from dawn till dusk, so probably over six, six to seven hours. You should check out that video. I'll put a link to it had a really good time and I got some photos that I'm really happy with so if you haven't seen that video check it out that's one of my favorites that I've done in a long time the farm field is back back over here and last I saw them they were feeding further down up in the farm field and I'm going to be using that wall as cover so I'm going to be Kind of ducking down a bit so I'm sure that my head doesn't poke over the wall and they see me. 
and I'm going to make my way to that gate and, allow, and lie down there. With a little bit of luck, they might come into a position where I can get photos of them. soon but the Egyptian goose is still there and it looks kind of cool it's just different from what I'm used to so I'm glad I'm just kind of seizing this opportunity to, um, to try and photograph it I'm sorry I have to whisper because I don't want to risk them flying away I might try and move through the fence That's it for this video on how I approach geese for photography. And remember I said in the beginning, when the opportunity comes around to photograph a species that you don't normally get to work with, take it. The geese in the field were actually just here for about seven to 10 days around Christmas times. And it's January now and they're gone. I haven't seen them here since. So I'm really glad that I took the time and work with them when they were here. When I was in the field, I didn't actually get all the photos in one go. I had to come back there a couple of times. The first day I was there, I was probably lying in that field for about an hour, hour and a half, and something came around and spooked them and they flew off, and I never got a photo. And that's the way it goes. You gotta put in the time, and it's not gonna work every time. But the next time I was there, and I got most of the photos that I showed in the video, and got a bit of rain as well, which is kinda cool, but um, there was shooting nearby. I got a little bit disturbed by that and I started walking around a bit, which may have worked in my favor. They came a little bit closer to me. So anyways, that is one of the ways I approach geese for photography. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.